Hello, welcome to the Horticulturalists. I'm Matthew Lucas, still locked down in Melbourne. And I'm Stephen Ryan, and we post a video every week. So don't forget to subscribe and press the alert button to remind you each week when a video comes up. As you can see, this is not our usual format. Stephen and I are usually together in his wonderful garden or visiting someone else's wonderful garden, but we're just having to manage as we can, but broadcasting will return to normal very soon because Melbourne comes out of its lockdown this week. But now, Stephen, what is cooking in your garden this week? This week, I want to talk about an interesting group of corms from Southern Africa. They're called the Babianas and they're related to the Frisias and Ixias and Sparaxis group of bulbs in the Iridaceae family. There's about 93 recognised species, and one of the more common colours that you'll see around in people's gardens are the lovely blue ones. And this one I've got next to me here is Babiana leopoldii. Now, it's not about this particular Babiana that I wanted to wax lyrical today. I want to talk about one that is one of the most bizarre of the Babianas. So come and have a look at this one. Oh, how interesting. Now, if we were together, I would be asking you, what is the difference between a bulb, a corm, a tuber, and a rhizome? We'll have to save that for another episode. And it so happens I have my own rather sad pot of babiana, and I really feel they just have not thrived because they're not getting enough sun. Anyway, if they can hang on until our new house, they will get all the sun they need. But I am very curious, as I'm sure all our viewers are, about this bizarre Babiana. Off you go, Stephen. Now, the Babianas, uh, the name itself comes from an Afrikaan word that has been Latinized, and it actually means baboon. And apparently the baboons eat the bulbs, or the corms, I should say. Fortunately, I don't have that issue in my own garden. Now, there's lots of other colors in Babianas, but in my garden, I've got two others I'd like to show off. One of them is this really soft lemon colored Babiana, which is known as Babiana odorata. And its name gives away one of its great features, and that is it has a beautiful scent, rather like that of violets. So well worth growing for its perfume alone. And this little white one is something of a, an enigma in my garden. I don't remember planting it. Maybe that's a senior moment, uh, but I rather think it might actually be a seedling hybrid that's come up in the garden. So if anybody knows what this little white babiana should be called, I'd love to hear from you. The thing I wanted to talk about today though is one specific Babiana which is completely different to any of its compatriots. In fact at one stage it was in its own genus called Anathylus. Uh, it was also classed as a Gladiolus at one point but now it seems to have settled down into the Babiana genus quite well. And it's Babiana ringens. Ringens means gaping as in gaping of the mouth. And if you look at the flowers of this plant, you can see how the petals go in two different directions and it looks like a gaping mouth. So it's a perfectly good name for this plant. But its biggest claim to fame is something that it has developed that none of, other, none of the other Babianas have. And that's the bird perch. You can see here, if you look closely, there is a almost woody structure that comes up behind the flower spike. And it is quite literally a bird perch. Uh, the malachite sunbirds are one of the major pollinators of this plant. So it has made a nice roost for the bird so it can sit on there and it can poke its beak down into the flowers and get the nectar out. So this is a really interesting adaptation that this particular bulb has developed. Of course, it's also a nice red color and red is a color that often denotes a bird pollinated plant because they see those colors really well. So Babiana ringens is a fabulous plant. Now, it comes from poor sandy soils in um, the Cape provinces of South Africa, and so grows well around the world in Mediterranean style climates. It's here growing in what I rather laughingly call my oxalarium, where I've got lots of South African oxala species growing, and it carries me through till later in the season. It can also be grown perfectly happily in pots, like a lot of these bulbs can, uh, and uh, so you could grow it perhaps in colder climates and grow it as a potted plant, and then keep the uh, corms dry during the summer months. So Babiana ringens, a remarkable little plant and something well worthwhile having for its novelty value as well as its beauty. What an extraordinary plant and now I'm curious, you'll have to leave this in the comments, do Australian honey eater birds sit on that bird perch and pollinate the flower? How amazing is that and what an extraordinary adaptation. And I must say the oxalarium is looking interesting. 
I haven't seen it through the whole seasonal trajectory, so we might have to just follow up and see what happens in autumn in your oxalarium. Well, Matthew, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the malachite sunbird pollinated babiana and the fact that these plants are eaten by baboons in the wild. It's amazing what trivia one can find out about plants. I think they're fabulous and anybody can grow them in a Mediterranean style climate. So join us again next week when we'll have some more interesting daring do in the horticultural world. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, I did. I love learning about Babiana, particularly the name, which is really fascinating. Now, if you are also interested in the name Babiana, Stephen and I did make a video about Latin plant names, which I will link here. What could we possibly do next week? I don't know, but do tune in every Friday. We post once a week and we will take you on another horticultural adventure. But until then, see you next week.